Look, Bob. It's Johnny! <laughs> oh my god! Um, I love that reference. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you, buddy? Good, how are you? Welcome to my mom. So, boys, what are we drinking? I'm gonna have a glass of uh, champagne. Ooh, bubbly, okay. Step it up with a splash of crab. Ooh, love spicy. So, how long have you been tending bar? <laughs> <laughs> a day and a half. You, you must be a pro. Obviously, I'm not a, a high intensity bartender like, you know, Tom Cruise and Risky Business. You mean you won't dance for us on the, on the bar? <laughs> well, I might do that. <laughs> You guys are on fire. I, you know, follow you on TikTok like so many people do. And you just bring me so much joy with your dances, all the questions that you answer about yourselves, your lives. You've basically opened the doors to people getting to know you. How long would you say it, it takes to do like a TikTok dance video for you all? Sometimes we'll be able to uh, do it in five or six rehearsals mm -hmm. and then a take or two. Sometimes we never it'll, get it right. It'll, <laughs> it'll drag on for days. Yes. Do you ever get um, frustrated with each other where you're like, you're not getting it right? <laughs> I think silently yeah. we all probably do, but we don't vocalize it with each other. That's because very nice. We, you got to keep the group together. Yeah, we're yeah. professionals. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask who is the biggest diva of the group? Oh, that's easy. It's just saying. You agree? I uh, for sure, <laughs> yes. Sign seal delivery. He Jesse's is. fetish is that he wants to be a blonde. <laughs> and he's also a crier. Uh, he cries for joy, he yeah. cries for sadness. You give him an excuse and he'll take it to cry. Legend has it before you were famous old gays that you came together because of a Craigslist ad. That's true. Yes. So please tell me, paint the picture, you know, how did this all happen? I had to leave the place where I was staying mm -hmm. and a friend of mine suggested, uh, look on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. And I answered an ad that mentioned about a mid-century modern house Love. and that uh, you had to you know, be accepting of an alternative lifestyle. Oh. What would that uh, alternative lifestyle be? Well, nudists. Okay. And uh, marijuana. Okay. And I think those were the two major. Oh, and a gay lifestyle. My favorite things. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> anyway, so I, I drove up to the house and um, I saw Bob working in the front without his shirt on. Oh. And I oh, thought, I well, you know, why not? <laughs> no. So I asked to see the house, I asked to see my room, and um, the rest is history. The rest is history, oh, yes. I want to flip the script because, you know, there's this uh, old adage in the queer community, the gay community especially, that, you know, I heard this in my 20s, like, when you, once you turn 30, it's all over. It's mm. done. So you guys have really shown that that's definitely not the case. What could you say to, you know, a rotted twink in his 20s that are like, oh, what are they doing here? Who's this guy in his 30s? What would you say to those people? Life is the only beginning, and mm. I can tell you, I lived in San Francisco for 10 years before I moved to the Palm Springs area. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, when I was living in San Francisco, I had a lot of sex. <laughs> Good. Since I've been in the desert, my sexual contact number in the thousands. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. I <laughs> thought that was going to be a desert joke of, you know, it's dried up. Oh, but, no. Oh, so the palms are springing. Oh, they are definitely. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I lived in Los Angeles for 35 years, yeah. I always thought that, you know, Palm Springs is where the elephants go to die. <laughs> uh, but uh, in fact, I've had 
more encounters, more sex in Palm Springs than I ever had in Los Angeles. It gives me so much hope. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I love that. that. Did you ever subscribe to that idea when you were younger in your 20s or 30s that you're like, oh, well, youth is the most important thing? Oh, yes, most yeah. definitely. I'm 35 now and I feel like, oh gosh, I feel like life is so much better now than it was when I was 21. Oh, it's most definitely. Um, I, for me, it's a, you know, most of the big questions have been answered mm -hmm. one way or the other. I guess when you get older, um, you don't care as much. Yeah, I love that feeling of not care. And, and there's uh, an old saying, you're as young as you think, mm. and so, you adopt that mm -hmm. and live it and it'll be true. You got your, you know, rise to fame with your grinder videos mm -hmm. that you did with them. It seems like a lot of people like to see older guys naked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, which was quite a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How much did you know about the hookup apps um, when you started or before? Oh, I've known about hookup apps for ever since they were invented. Right. Yeah, because they've been around. I mean, Craigslist was one of them. Like, take me back to your 20s and 30s. What was hookup culture like back then? In my 20s, I was living in St. Louis mm -hmm. and Hookups were basically confined to certain cruising spots mm -hmm. in Forest Park mm -hmm. and dark alleys and a very few bars that you would enter from the alley. Yeah, and that you... was pretty much it. So for you? Uh, well, I moved to Los Angeles when, my, uh, when I was 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I sort of know the flesh pots of Hollywood. <laughs> um, yes, there were lots of places, like uh, we mentioned that there was there used to be a Union 76 station uh, at Melrose and the, and the Hollywood Freeway. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very popular with the CHP and the LAPD. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is sort of my thing. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I have so many fetishes, it's just... Uh, Lovely. Mm -hmm. We're very pro-sex here. Are you guys dating at the moment? No. No? No, Single no. as a Pringle? Yeah. Right yeah. Single. Single NSA. <laughs> no, strings attached for anyone who doesn't know what that means. <laughs> is there any, like, you know, cruising stories from back in the day that you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened to me. Well, back in the day, mm -hmm. I flew up to San Francisco mm -hmm. to play with a guy mm -hmm. uh, who I met at the Gay Pride Festival down in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I came up there and we decided to go to the baths. Yeah. And I met Christian Bjorn. Oh. Yes. Wow. And um, there was a, uh, hello, how are you? Here, can you come with me. I was all of 22, 23 years old. Wow. Yeah. How about you? The uh, immediate thought that popped into my head was I picked up a guy once and brought him back home and he asked if he could use my shower mm -hmm. to clean up. I said, sure. And he was in my shower almost an hour. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally, when he got out, I had lost all interest <laughs> in the encounter yeah. and couldn't perform. Yeah. And so it was a dud. Yeah, I mean, it, that's the thing. Like some, some parts of it are so exciting when it's in the moment and you're you know, excited to be there. Would you say that you know, because cruising is having a bigger resurgence now, I think after COVID, do you think there's a reason for that? That people are like, let me leave the app alone and let me go out into the world? When I've been... Um cruising on, on an app. There are two kinds of guys, guys who are spur of the moment, who are really, you know, psyching up to get it, you know, to mm -hmm. get it up. Yeah. And then there are other guys who say, well, I want to plan. I want to plan this out. And um, so sometimes it just depends on the individual to see, you know, how they're going to respond. I've been in the desert so long now, 32 yeah. years, and I think this is one of the big reasons it's such a mecca for gays now, mm. is that most of the cruising takes place in clothing optional resorts. Yeah. And so 
everybody's already naked. Uh, that go. cuts the cuts out process, the middleman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the time yeah. very short, so you get right to the nitty gritty. Yeah, because sometimes the pesky clothes are like it could kill the mood because you're like, oh, the shirt might yeah. gotta take off my belt and yeah. Yeah, I and and there's so many good excuses for being naked. <laughs> I mean, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. How often would you say y'all are hooking up? Not with each other, but in general. Right now, not nearly as much as pre-COVID. Because of COVID and now monkeypox. And I know, I think we all have uh, kind of pulled back. Yeah. Uh, but I know I'm itching. <laughs> <laughs> not from the pox. But from no, <laughs> not, not, not from anything yeah. other than the desire. <laughs> there. Cheers to desire. Desire. Yeah, yeah. I'll drink to that. Here, here. here Cheers. Here. All right, we'll move away from sex for a sec. <laughs> well, you know, we, we talked a lot about your rise to fame and the obsession that millennials and Gen Z have with you. Why do you think that is? I think it's because we are willing to be vulnerable. Mm. That we really don't have too many inhibitions and we kind of let it all out. And people enjoy that. Vulnerable means that you, you allow yourself to be hurt. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think as you become older, at least in my case, as I've become older, that becomes less and less of an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of think, well, you know, because I've been through so many one night stands and, and I'm really looking for NSAs myself now. So I, I, I kind of look at it this way is, you know, if it happens, a relationship happens, mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. Uh, because a person will want to, you know, develop that. Do you think it's also because, you know, you've come to a place where you're very comfortable with yourself oh. and there are, you know, as people are younger, they are still developing, finding themselves. Do you think they just want a little piece of what you have? I think there's part oh, of I that. Th yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of that. Uh, I think yeah. there's a lot of chaos in the world. Mm -hmm. I guess they look to us for stability. <laughs> which, well, anyway, I won't get into that. Um, because I remember in my 20s, we were full of torment and angst. Yeah. And, you know, I was looking for love and, mm -hmm. you know, in all the wrong places. And, uh, you know, when I finally found love, you know, that was what was so incredible about, you know, my relationship lasted a quarter of a century. Well, cheers to being famous old gays. Yes. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Yeah.